Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how to calculate the area of a parallelogram using the equations of its four sides. So the equation of the four sides will be provided and based on that we have to come up with a formula to calculate the area of the parallelogram. Here in the diagram I have a parallelogram A, B, C, D. The equations of each of the four sides have been provided. The equation of the side A, D is actually A sub 1 times X plus B sub 1 times Y plus C sub 1 equals 0 and its parallel side B, C's equation has been provided as A sub 1 times X plus B B sub 1 times y plus d sub 1 equals 0 and similarly the equation of the side a b has been provided as a sub 2 times x plus b sub 2 times y plus c sub 2 equals 0 and its parallel side c d's equation has been provided as a sub 2 times x plus b sub 2 times y plus d sub 2 equals 0. And because all these four equations have been provided that means we know the coefficients and the constant terms there. So basically the known numbers are actually a sub 1, b sub 1, c sub 1, d sub 1 and similarly a sub 2, b sub 2, c sub 2 and d sub 2. Those will be all known numbers. They will be provided in the question. From geometry we know that the area of a parallelogram is equal to any of the sides multiplied by the height of the parallelogram based on that side. So in this diagram if we consider the side BC then we can say that the area of this parallelogram would be equal to the length of BC multiplied by the height from BC up to the line AD its parallel line AD right. In this diagram I have denoted the height as H sub 1 which is the length of AE and I have denoted that as H sub 1. So if that is the height and we consider the side length BC then its area obviously will be equal to bc times h sub 1. So let me make a quick note here. I am writing at the bottom right corner there. So you can say that this is length of bc or I am simply writing bc times h sub 1. Now finding the h sub 1 is easy because it is the distance between two parallel lines whose equations have been provided. But finding the length of bc is going to be a little bit tricky and I am going to show you how to calculate that. So first let us try to find the length of bc right. Now to find the length of bc we have to use another technique somehow we have to utilize the equation of BC to find the length of BC. So let us try that. Now what I am going to do I am going to extend the side DC little bit and then I am going to drop a perpendicular from the point B onto the extended DC line and let us assume that the perpendicular landed on point F on the extended DC. Now can we denote the length of BF as H sub 2. So this is like the distance between the two parallel sides AB and CD. So I am denoting the length of BF as H sub 2 so many units. Right Now if angle ABC is equal to theta then obviously angle BCF will also be equal to theta and if that is the case then can we say that BF over BC would be equal to sine of theta because if you think about the triangle BCF it is nothing but a right triangle and hypotenuse is BC. So BF over BC would be equal to sine of theta and from here can we say that BC would be equal to BF over sine of theta and we are denoting BF as H sub 2 so we can write it as H sub 2 over sine of theta. I hope it is clear up to this point. So we have somehow found the value of BC in terms of H sub 2 and sine of theta. We still have to calculate the value of h sub 2 and sine of theta and we are going to do that soon. So here for our area can we say that well then this is definitely equal to h sub 2 over sine of theta in place of bc I am writing h sub 2 over sine of theta multiplied by h sub 1. So that is equal to h sub 1 multiplied by h sub 2 over sine of theta. I hope it is clear up to this point. So now to calculate the area we have to figure out what is the value of h sub 1, what is the value of h sub 2 and what is the value of sin of theta. So let us determine those three different values one by one. If you carefully look at the diagram h sub 1 is actually the distance between the two parallel lines AD and BC and similarly h sub 2 is also the distance between the two parallel lines AB and CD. We already know from a previous video that the distance between two parallel lines is given by this equation. 
I have already created a separate video on this topic. I have shared the link in the description. Feel free to watch it. Now in our example when calculating h sub 1, can we then say that it will be equal to modulus of the difference of the two constant terms of those two parallel lines and what are the constant terms there? Well for the first parallel line the constant term is c sub 1 and the second parallel line the constant term is d sub 1. So we can say that h sub 1 is definitely equal to modulus of c sub 1 minus d sub 1 over square root of a sub 1 square plus b sub 1 square. So this should be modulus of c sub 1 minus d sub 1 over square root of a sub 1 square plus b sub 1 square. And as you can see, we know all those four numbers, the c sub 1 and the d sub 1, the a sub 1 and b sub 1, we know all those numbers, they have been provided in form of the equation, right? So we can easily calculate the value of h sub 1. All right, now let's try to calculate the value of h sub 2. For h sub 2, we can say that h sub 2 would be equal to modulus of difference of the two constant terms. Now if we look at the two parallel lines there, which are a, b and c, D, the constant terms are actually c sub 2 and d sub 2 and the coefficient of x and y they are a sub 2 and b sub 2. So then we can write it as c sub 2 minus d sub 2 within the modulus sign of course and that will be over square root of a sub 2 square plus b sub 2 square. Alright, we have found the values of h sub 1 and h sub 2. Now the only other value that we need to calculate is sine of theta. To calculate sine of theta, we have to begin with tangent of theta because that is one information we can easily find out. We know that theta is the angle between the two lines AB and BC. So from there, we can easily find the value of the angle theta and we know that the value of the theta angle would be equal to tangent inverse of modulus of m sub 1 minus m sub 2 over 1 plus m sub 1 m sub 2. I have already created a separate video on this topic. I have shared the link in the description. Feel free to watch that video as well. Now what is m sub 1 and m sub 2? Well m sub 1 would be the slope of the line AB and m sub 2 would be the slope of the line BC. Now let's quickly calculate the value of m sub 1 and m sub 2. So here I am going to write m sub 1 right here. So we can say m sub 1 is definitely equal to negative a sub 2 over b sub 2 and here here for the line BC its slope would be m sub 2 equals negative a sub 1 over b sub 1 and if you are thinking how did I come up with these slopes? Well, let me show you one of them real quick. Say suppose let's go with the equation of the line AB which is a sub 2 times x plus b sub 2 times y plus c sub 2 equals 0. So from there if you think about it, let me make a quick note on the side here. The equation is like this a sub 2 times x plus b sub 2 times y plus c sub 2 equals 0 and if we convert this equation into y equals mx plus c form or mx plus b form then how is it going to look like? Well, well, it would be b sub 2 times y equals negative a sub 2 times x and minus c sub 2 and from here we can say that y would be equal to negative a sub 2 over b sub 2 times x minus c sub 2 over b sub 2. We divided both sides by b sub 2 and here you can see this is the value of the slope and that's exactly what I have written next to those two equations up there. Let me go back to the diagram again. So there I have noted that the slope of the line AB will be equal to negative a sub sub 2 over b sub 2 and similarly slope of the line bc would be equal to negative a sub 1 over b sub 1. So now let's calculate the value of tangent of theta. So from here we can say then tangent of theta would be equal to modulus of what is m sub 1? Well m sub 1 is actually negative a sub 2 over b sub 2 minus m sub 2 is the slope of the line bc and that is actually negative a sub 1 over b sub 1 and all of that is over 1 plus m sub 1 times m sub 2. So let me write it like this a sub 2 over b sub 2 that is m sub 1 times negative a sub 1 over b sub 1 that is actually m sub 2. So it's kind of looking like this. Now let's try to simplify this little bit. So if we simplify this it would be a sub 1 over 
over B sub 1 that will become positive because of the two negatives there that will become positive and then this other term will remain negative which is A sub 2 over B sub 2 and divided by we have 1 plus both negative terms multiplied together so they will become positive so it would be A sub 1 times A sub 2 over B sub 1 times B sub 2 and we can write this as here the LCM in the numerator LCM would be B sub 1 times B sub 2 and it would be A sub 1 times B sub 2 minus A sub 2 times B sub 1 and in the denominator again the LCM would be B sub 1 times B sub 2 and it would be B sub 1 times B sub 2 plus A sub 1 times A sub 2 and from here can we write it like this you see the B sub 1 times B sub 2 that will cancel each other in the numerator and the denominator so we are going to be left with something like this in the numerator we are going to have A sub 1 times B sub 2 minus A sub 2 times B sub 1 and in the denominator we are going to have A sub 1 times A sub 2 plus B sub 1 times B sub 2. Now from the value of tangent of theta we have to find out the value of sine of theta. Now how can we do that? Well let's do this little trigonometric trick here. We can write sine of theta as square root of sine square of theta and that can be written as square root of 1 minus cosine square of theta which can be written as square root of 1 minus 1 over second square of theta and that can be written as square root of 1 minus 1 over tangent square of theta plus 1 and if we simplify this little bit we can write it as tangent square of theta plus 1 and then the minus 1 and all of that would be over tangent square of theta plus 1 and this is actually square root of tangent square of theta because you see this positive 1 and negative 1 they will cancel out each other so we are going to be left with tangent square of theta over tangent square of theta plus 1 and all of that is under the square root. So we see that sin theta's value is going to be something like this. Now I am going to plug in this value of tangent of theta, the value that we just derived. I am going to plug in that value in place of tangent of theta and from there we will derive the value of sin of theta. So let us do that quickly. So here let us plug in the value of tangent of theta. So we can say this is definitely equal to square root of wherever we have tangent square of theta. I have plugged in the value of tangent of theta and I have used a whole square there. Now because you are squaring the absolute value terms, the absolute value sign can be eliminated there. So so now we can write it as something like that and from here can we write it like this. Now if you carefully notice that we have between the numerator and the denominator we have the common denominator there which is this one and this one they are going to cancel out each other. So now we are going to be left with something like this and then let's remove the parenthesis in the denominator. Let's keep the numerator as is because that's like in a whole square form. So we can write it as something like this. From the first square term we will get something like this and then from the second square term we will get something like this and here as you can see that these two terms will cancel each other. One is the negative term and the other one is a positive term so they will cancel out each other. So we are going to be left with only four of these terms right here. So this one, this one, this one and this one. These four terms in the denominator and the numerator can be kept as is. So now let's try to simplify a little further and see what happens and from here if we rearrange the terms little bit in the denominator then we can write it as something like this and then let's factorize the denominator and see what happens. Between the first two terms in the denominator we have a common factor of a sub 2 squared and then between the third and fourth terms again we have a b sub 2 squared as a common factor. So we can write it as something like this and then from here can we write it as something like this. For the numerator I am going to write it like this because it is a whole square I am going to bring it out of the square root. So we can write it as modulus of a sub 1 times b sub 2 minus a sub 2 times b sub 1 and in the denominator we are going to have the square root. So there we have a sub 1 square plus b sub 1 square times a sub 2 square plus b sub 2 square. And this is the value of sine of theta. So let me highlight this that this is actually sine of theta. 
all right so so far we have been able to calculate the value of h sub 1 h sub 2 and sine of theta so area of the parallelogram was something like this so we can write it as h sub 1 times h sub 2 divided by sine of theta and we have already found the values of h sub 1 and h sub 2 h sub 1 was something like this times h sub 2 was something like this and divided by sine of theta which is something like this and if we simplify this a little more then it's going to look like this we can multiply both the square root terms like this and we can change the division into a multiplication and then we can write it like this the square root will go to the numerator and the numerator will come down to the denominator and now if you carefully look at it we have this term here in the denominator and this term here in the numerator they look exactly identical so they will cancel each other so finally we are going to be left with a value like this c sub 1 minus d sub 1 within modulus sign of course multiplied by modulus of c sub 2 minus d sub 2 over modulus of a sub 1 times b sub 2 minus a sub 2 times b sub 1 and that is the area of the parallelogram and also this can be written as something like this i'm going to show you one other form the numerator will remain as is so c sub 1 minus d sub 1 within the modulus sign times c sub 2 minus d sub 2 within the modulus sign of course and then the denominator can be written as a determinant if you are familiar with determinant we can write it as a sub 1 b sub 1 and a sub 2 b sub 2 this determinant is actually a sub 1 times b sub 2 minus a sub 2 times b sub 1. So this is also another form whatever way is easier for you to remember you can remember either the first form or the second form but they both are the same thing there is basically no difference it's just two different look and feel whichever is easy for you to remember you can remember that one and we can take an example suppose we have been given the equations of the four sides of a parallelogram and they are kind of like this those are the equations of the four sides of a parallelogram i have written the two parallel sides together like on the left hand side the two equations that we see those are the equations of one pair of the parallel sides and then the equations on the right hand side they are the equations of the other pair of the parallel sides and if we want to denote them using the general form then we can denote them as here i have noted the general form that way it will be easier for us to identify what is our a sub 1 and b sub 1 and a sub 2 and b sub 2 and also our c sub 1 d sub 1 c sub 2 and d sub 2 we are going to need that to calculate the area of this parallelogram now let's plug in the values in our formula so what is our formula then the formula for the area of parallelogram is like this it's modulus of c sub 1 minus d sub 1 times modulus of c sub 2 minus d sub 2 over modulus of a sub 1 times b sub 2 minus a sub 2 times b sub 1 and we have already derived that formula now for this example we just have to plug in the values of those coefficients and constant terms right so from here we can say okay what is our c sub 1 well c sub 1 is actually positive 1 and what is our d sub 1 well d sub 1 is actually positive 12 so that is the first modulus in the numerator times the second modulus term would be c sub 2 what is c sub 2 that's negative 6 minus what is d sub 2 well d sub 2 is actually negative 9 over modulus of what is a sub 1 well a sub 1 is actually positive 3 times what is b sub 2 b sub 2 is actually positive 3 again minus what is a sub 2 well a sub 2 is actually positive 2 times what is b sub 1 well in our case b sub 1 is actually negative 1 because y has no coefficient that means it's the negative 1 so b sub 1 is actually negative 1 and if we simplify this the first modulus function will give us 11 and the second modulus function will give us 9 minus 6 that is 3 so we are going to get 3 out of there and then in the denominator we have 9 plus 2 that is 11 so that will be equal to 3 and since this is area we have to write it as 3 square units if we can remember the formula of area of a parallelogram calculating the area is pretty easy we just have to be able to interpret you know what is our a sub 1 b sub 1 c sub 1 and d sub 1 and similarly a sub 2 b sub 2 c sub 2 and d sub 2 once we can recognize those coefficients and constant terms then calculating the area is pretty easy i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video